Hi everyone! Welcome to the first part of our Intro to Scratch video series. In this series, we'll talk about a wide range of concepts and I'll walk you through how to make several projects. Today, I'm going to walk you through a backdrop changing project. Let's first look at a demo to see what it's supposed to look like. So I have the project pulled up right here and we're going to click the green flag to start the program. You'll notice that a bubble pops up at the bottom of the game asking the user what location would you like. In computer science, the person who uses the computer or program is referred to as the user. So we're going to respond by typing in an answer below. Let's type in desert and see what happens. Cool, so we see that the wallpaper changed. Let's try another backdrop. I'm gonna click the green flag again to restart and let's try jungle this time. I think there's one more backdrop that we can choose from and that is farm. Cool, so let's get started with building this project. So once your Scratch account is created, click the Create button at the top left corner to get started with your new project. And your screen should look something like this. Notice that our screen is divided up into three sections. At the very left side of the screen holds all of our code blocks. You'll notice that they're all color coded and they're divided into categories such as motion, looks, sound events, control, and so on. Don't worry too much about what these blocks mean for now, but just know that they're there. So the middle section is our script. This is where we can drag and drop our blocks to the middle to create our code. Basically instructions for a computer to follow. On the right hand side, you'll see that this is the stage. Every single Scratch project comes preloaded with this default Scratch Cat character. This is where we'll see what our computer does after our program is run. And at the bottom right, you'll see that there's two big blue buttons. This left one with a cat and a plus sign coming out of it is where we can create a new sprite. And then the right button is where we can create a new backdrop. So let's start with creating a new character. First, let's delete this cat from our screen by clicking the trash can at the right hand corner and then going to the left button to choose a new sprite. Your screen should look something like this. You'll notice that there's a ton of different characters and it can definitely be a little bit overwhelming at times. So at the very top, you'll see that you can filter by categories. For this project, I'm going to choose dot. So now we can see that dot is in the middle of our screen. We can also change the size of our character by clicking in the bubble where it says size. And let's just try what 75 looks like. Click enter or click anywhere on your screen and you should see the size change. We can also create our own custom sprites. For example, in the ocean cleanup project, the pieces of garbage, I use the pen and brush tools to create a sprite such as this um, plastic bag, as well as drawing little brown spots on this banana and the soda can, just for a reference. Next, we can select which backdrops or wallpapers that we want our sprite to explore. So go to the bottom right uh, in this right button where it says choose a backdrop. You'll notice here there's also a lot of choices and again, at the very top, you can filter by categories. For this project, I'm going to choose three backdrops and I'm going to choose desert, farm, and jungle. So I just click on them one by one and let's add a farm next. And we'll, the last one, we'll pick jungle. Awesome. So now if I go to the backdrop section at this top left tab, you'll notice that I can see backdrop one, which is just this plain white one that we began with, as well as the three backdrops that I chose here. 
If you change your mind and want to get rid of a backdrop, you can just click the trash can icon on each respective backdrop. Next, it's time to start putting our code together to tell the computer what to do. So we'll be dragging and dropping some of the blocks and categories into our stage. So let's navigate over to back to the code tab. So we'll be dragging and dropping blocks into the script area like we talked about earlier. And since it's your first time, we'll explain what the blocks we use mean as we go through each step. So for most Scratch projects, they typically start with a block labeled when green flag is clicked. You can find this in the yellow events section and it's the top block. So we're just going to drag this block to the middle and you can just drag it anywhere. Just make sure that it's easy to see. And this events section contains blocks that we normally call event listeners. These are usually labeled with win plus some event as you can see here. You can think of them as telling the computer what it should do when some event happens. These events could be clicks, key presses, or when something changes. The when green flag clicked block in particular tells our Scratch program to do something when we click the green flag, which is located above the stage here. Since we are putting it at the start of our code, it will make sure that all of the code below it runs when we click the green flag. Next, we will be using a block from the purple looks category. These blocks help us do actions to control a sprite's appearance, like changing colors. Because in this project we want to change the backdrops, we want to use a looks block that is related to backdrops. So if you go into this looks category, you should see a block labeled switch back, drop two, and let's just attach it right below when green flag clicked. This means that when the green flag is clicked, we want to switch the backdrop to jungle. Uh, if you click this drop down arrow, you should be able to select which specific backdrop to change to. We want to start with the plain white backdrop, which we remember was called backdrop one. If a program is interactive, that means at some point in the program, the computer will need the user to tell what to do next. In this way, the program interacts with the user and the user's input will affect how the program will run. Almost everything we use today is interactive, from apps like Instagram to games like Minecraft, where users can tap to like photos or use their keyboard to control their character. So in the next step, we will be making our program interactive by asking the user what location they want to have their backdrop. To do this, we'll be using blocks from the sensing category. So this is the teal section. And you'll notice that the very first block is called ask, what's your name and wait. Because we want to be asking the user something, we want this log. So I'm going to drag it, and again, I'm going to just connect it to the purple block. So this block will bring up a box that asks the user a question and then waits for them to enter an answer. As you can see, by default, this box asks the question, what's your name, to the user. But let's change that to fit our project. So let's ask the user, what location would you like? Perfect. So it's important to code our project in a way that users can understand what our program is doing. In the blocks column, you'll notice there's a small round block labeled answer right under the ask and wait block. This block will save the user's response to a question. So let's drag it somewhere in our script as well and we're not going to connect it to anything. We're just going to use this later on. Next, let's click the green flag and you'll notice that our backdrop changed to the plain white backdrop that we started from the beginning and our program is asking us what location would you like? Let's type in desert. So this desert response is going to be held or saved in this answer bubble. 
we want the program to change our backdrop based on the user's answer. For example, if the user responds with desert, we want our backdrop to change to a desert scenery. This is where blocks called conditional statements will come in. A conditional statement is a simple if-then statement. So one example would be, if it's raining today, then I'm going to bring my umbrella so that I don't get wet. Part starting with if is the condition. Conditional statements live in the orange control category here because they help us control what happens and when. So we can see that there's a block that's called if then. Let's drag this block and connect it right below the teal ask and wait block. We want to check if the location the user gave is one of the backdrop locations that we selected. For this, we need to use something called an equality operator. This operator will help us tell the program our condition for our desired outcome. So if our answer equals desert, then switch backdrop to desert. You can think of the equality operator as an equal sign saying one thing is or equals something else. Now we need to make our condition by using the equality operator block. This is found in the green operators category. It will have two white bubbles with an equal sign in the middle. So it's this block. You'll notice that this block is pointy. So that means we can fit it right inside this conditional block from earlier. We're going to drag in the small answer code block into the left hand side of our equality operator. And we're going to type in one of our backdrop locations into the right hand side. We can start with desert. To finish up our conditional statement, we have to tell our program what should happen if our condition is met. This will be the then part of the structure. Use the same purple switch backdrop block and put it inside this conditional statement. You can kind of see it looks like a crocodile with a mouth and we're just gonna drag it right inside there. So here, if the user's answer is desert, then we want to switch our backdrop to the desert. Now let's make sure that our program works. Let's click the green flag at the top and we're gonna type in desert. Awesome, now you can see that the backdrop or wallpaper changed to the desert one. Great, so we're almost there. Now all that's left is to repeat this conditional statement for the other two backdrop locations that we chose. A super helpful hint is that you can duplicate blocks without having to drag and drop them all over again. So say that I want to duplicate this orange, this orange conditional block. So I'm going to drag it off and then I'm just going to right click it and you'll see a duplicate option. Awesome. So now I have two of these and we're just going to duplicate it one more time since we have three backdrops. Let's connect it back to the rest of our code and let's change it for the other two wallpapers. Awesome. So your final program should look something like this. Again, I'm just gonna click the green flag and let's see if the other two backdrops work. Cool, so it seems like farm works. And last but not least, we'll test out jungle. And that works too. Congratulations, you just made your first Scratch program. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Juni Learning for weekly updates on math and coding tutorials. And if you want to keep watching more videos, you can do that right here. Also, if you want to keep learning from instructors like me, don't forget to check out JuniLearning.com for private and group courses that we have to offer. Thanks so much for joining us and we hope to see you next time.